Let's talk about Adventures League Season 8, the season where nobody is special. Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about the new changes to Adventures League for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, there are two major changes coming, and that is how characters will advance, as well as treasure. Let's talk about advancement first. Um, if you play D&D &D for any amount of time, you know that the way that characters normally advance is by getting experience points through killing monsters, overcoming obstacles, uh, things like that, so that as you get experience, you gain experience and level up by hitting certain breakpoints. You know, for example, you go from first to second level once you hit 300 XP, and then it's like 3 to 900, and so on, where it's a little more XP each level. Um, now, the way they're going to do it moving forward instead of granting experience points we're going to get advancement points and what does that mean first let's start let's say you're playing a expeditions module something off of the dm's guild you won't get xp what instead you will be seeing is let's say it's a four hour module and it's season eight and beyond, the way they're going to do it, you're going to have two main objectives and two side objectives. For each of those, you'll either get one or two advancement points, um, depending on the level of the adventure. Now, if we're talking a hardcover, which is what people normally run um, on Adventures League night, not Expeditions Days, but like normal Adventures League, what you'll get is one advancement point per hour played. So let's say you play from 7 until 9 p.m. on every Wednesday. You would get two advancement, point, advancement points every week. It takes four advancement points from level 1 through 4 to advance to the next level. So every two weeks, you would be advancing in level. And then beyond that, it takes eight advancement points per level. So... Let's say, now this is, here's, here's part of the problem that I see. I have a lot of tables. I mean, ridiculous amount of tables where we play. 19 to be exact. Some of these tables play horrendously slow. I mean, Horde of the Dragon Queen took one group a year and a half. Now, Horde has set levels. Horde's levels were level 1 through 7. And the second book was 8 through 15. Now, as slow as this group played to get, just get through Horde of the Dragon Queen over that period of time, they would have tiered out of the adventure, each of their characters. Now, it does say you can slow advancement, but that doesn't mean that you don't advance once you hit the number of points. It means you take half points, um, and it's player choice. It's not the whole table. The players say, I'm going, to, I'm going to choose to advance at half level or slowed level, and they will only take for two hours. They would take one point. Now, as slow as this table played, even doing that, they would have tiered out of Horde of the Dragon Queen. And in Adventures League, when you tier out of an adventure, you can no longer play it with that character. So this table would have been starting over at level one if they played normally, several times, um, even if they slowed down at least once, my guess is, because of the, the amount of time we're talking about, it still would have been several times they'd have to start over again with first-level characters. So you can imagine that people are not going to be enjoying that, the fact that they have to tear out probably more rapidly. Now, here's the other issue that I see. A lot of times I'll see people saying, well, we have so many people at the table, we don't get enough XP for an encounter. That's not a problem with the experience point system. That's a problem with a DM that doesn't know how to DM. You always, if you have more than the recommended players at a table, if you have an adventure, let's say it's made for four to five characters, and you've got a full seven, 
you're going to have to bump up the number of creatures in each encounter so that you will still get the same amount of XP per player as if you were playing at a normal size table. Now, I honestly I think most DMs have trouble with this. I don't know if it's a matter of they can't simply sit down and go, okay, four players, this number of creatures, this is how much XP each one would be. Okay, this is what I need to bump up. These are the number of creatures so that it still equals the same amount and will advance at the same rate. I think it's poor DMing, bad math skills, whatever you want to call it, that make tables not level up quick enough. <coughs> Now the other issue can be sometimes these adventures as written don't really provide enough XP in there. So the DM needs to calculate what they need to be at max level and make adjustments through the campaign so they'll make it there um, or add a lot of random encounters that are appropriate to that adventure so that by the time they get to the final boss, they're not a couple of levels behind and they're able to make it through the fight. So, again, I think it's a matter of lack of experience on DM's parts or just lack of ability when it comes to just simple mathematics. But, honestly, that's not a valid reason to get rid of the XP system. We've played with that for, what, more than four decades, and it's been fine. So, what they're thinking, I don't know. But the problem that I see is tables are going to constantly be tearing out because of this new system and players are going to have to keep because dms have got to keep them honest and they have to follow the rules and if you're not following the rules as a dm adventures league you need to not play on adventures league night go play in a home campaign and do whatever you want to do but if you're playing adventures league when characters tear out they have gotten to a level higher than what's allowed in that hardcover or in that module they have to bring a new character in and if they don't have other characters, they're going to have to bring a level one character in so that they're within that tier. Um, and it's going to be a problem in things that are tier two adventures. If they only have one tier two, they may be tiered out and not able to finish that entire uh, adventure that they started in. So tiering out is going to be a problem. Um, it, it, it's just one of those things. It makes no sense. I mean, you knew it was coming when you read uh, Xanathar's. And uh, they had that thing in the back about if people like to just sit at a bar for 10 hours, they should be able to get the same XP as somebody goes out and kills a dragon. No, they shouldn't. It's not a valid style of play, and it's not something that's worthy of XP. You haven't done anything. I mean, the drunk that sits at your neighborhood bar, he never, ever improves as a human being. So why should your character? It makes no sense. Um, now, the only thing that Adventures League is doing, and if you read Xanathar's and then you read through what they're saying, they're saying if your party does not do something to advance the story, then you don't give them the full amount of advancement points or any. I mean, if they are that party in Adventures League and so they sit around drinking, you don't have to give them and you should not give them any advancement points. They need to advance the story. They can't putz around. All right, now... Here's the part that I really hate. Treasure points. So what are treasure points, you ask? Now, normally, you'll have several items that are given out in an adventure, whether it's a hardcover. Sometimes there'll be one or two items that are given out in an expeditions module. And the way it's always been, in my over four decades of playing, the party will say, okay, it dropped one item. Who will benefit the most or benefit the party the most by having that item? Now, I know we live in a time where people whine. Well, I wanted it. And another guy, I wanted it. Let's be real. It doesn't matter <sighs> who wants it. It's who needs it at the table. But instead of continuing to play the way we've always played, which always made sense, they've gone into the totally inane. So what will happen, the party finds an item, and you will log that the party found this item. Now, no one gets the item when you find it. What will happen is for every two hours that you play, you get a treasure point. And as those treasure points accumulate, you can buy magic items in between sessions. 
these items that drop in an adventure that are on your list, those can be bought by everyone at the table. So instead of you find a single item that someone can, act, can use, everyone can use treasure points to buy that item. It essentially clones itself and everyone who was whining can get that item. This is the most stupid thing I have ever seen in my life. Mostly because this will be and create an economy of magic items. There will, there's a list on each tier of what you can buy. There are items that you'll be able to get in adventures that everyone can buy. And what this will mean, in all probability, what I see, people, instead of building their characters the way they want to, they're going to build with the intent of getting specific items and power building. So, and let's be honest, ask yourself, have you actually had an adventure in 4th edition that you weren't able to complete because you didn't have magic items in your party? The answer is probably no. The only problem that's been caused by magic items are people whining because they didn't get what they want. And this is this is a generational thing. I'm going to flat out say it. You know, I don't care if I get a magic item or not. I may have something and be like, I'd kind of like to have it, but who needs it more than I do, and how will it benefit the party? That's the way I've always played. That's the way responsible adults play, because that's how responsible adults act in real life. They don't go, I want it, I want it, and then pout and whine about it. And we've gotten to where we have a society of gamers that think they're entitled to everything, and that just because they should get something, not that other person. And if that other person gets it, they should get it as well. Basically, everybody wants their trophy for showing up. And... It shouldn't be that way. I mean, it's going to ruin the game. DMs are, and I'm going to tell you, as a DM, when my table is flooded with magic items, I will power up the monsters appropriately so that they don't get face rolled. And that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, this is crap where everybody's going to have magic armor, magic weapons, magic items. Everybody will get special items that drop, the evergreen items. I mean, there are going to be so many things dropping. There are people are going to buy them. And you're going to have to power up your monsters or they're going to get wiped immediately. And it's absolutely stupid. I'll be honest, I don't even know how long I'll continue playing Adventures League with these changes because it is just beyond fucking stupid. Now, here's the other brilliant thing that they have. And I'll go over a couple other small changes. But this is one, we've had factions. And up until level 4, you get your free faction reses um, if you die. Now, that's gone. You can have a faction, but you have to take the faction agent background. So you can't take one of the other backgrounds, like a sage or something else. If you want to be able to have a faction, and factions are important in a lot of these stories because there will be side things for members of specific factions. So you're going to have to forego things like being a sage, a scholar, um, all these other backgrounds that are fun to have, fun to role play, they add bonuses to, you know, you get extra skills. You're going to have to forego that if you want to be a member of a faction. You have to specifically take the faction agent background and give up whatever these other backgrounds would give you. So they're screwing you over that way. Um, the other thing, they're not going to give you faction reses anymore. What you get to do is use your treasure point credit card basically and what that means if you don't have enough treasure points to get a resurrection you can go into treasure point debt so you'll have to mark down i used x treasure points to get resurrected and until you zero out that treasure point balance and get new treasure points you can't buy magic items so, unlucky players like the one guy at my table who's died four times in Tomb of Annihilation, he would be in serious debt and never see a magic item. Um, there, there's other players that have died several times. They would be in treasure point debt. So, instead of allowing the faction reses, which I know Tomb of Annihilation, there are no faction reses. You get to come back with a uh, surrogate. 
But in a normal campaign where people, like I said, are unlucky, would die over and over, they're going into treasure point debt, and it will be beyond stupid. Now, the other thing that you're not going to get when you talk about treasure, there will no longer be gold given out in adventures, whether it's a hardcover or an expedition module. If you find creatures and they say they have X gold, that gold does not drop for the players. You will get a set amount of gold when you level up. So like at level one, I think you get 50 or 75 gold pieces when you level up. Level two, the same thing. Level three, the same thing. Level four, then at level five, you get a whole 150, and then it increments up. So essentially, you're adventuring out of the goodness of your heart. You don't care about gold. And the other issue is going to be, if you have spells that require gold to buy materials, you're not going to have the gold to buy it. Let's be honest. Um, your party would have to, if you don't want to go into treasure point debt, pull together their little bit of gold that they've gotten to get you that resurrection. Or let's say they want to mess with you and get you the uh, reincarnation, whatever they choose to do. <coughs> but gold is really not going to be a thing anymore. It's going to be something where, I mean, basically, you're a working stiff working for a set dollar amount in gold rather than an adventurer trying to make your fortune and hopefully retire alive and wealthy. That's not going to happen in Adventures League. You won't retire wealthy. You're going to just be a working stiff. Hopefully getting enough, if you're a caster, to buy your spell components that you need. Um, or if you're someone that needs to buy armor and you are in treasure debt, but you won't end up getting plate that you couldn't afford initially, yeah, you're going to have to hope you get enough gold because you're just shit out of luck. You're not getting it. So that's an absolutely inane and stupid change to Adventures League that players and, and characters are adventuring out of the goodness of their heart. They don't care about money. I know it's a game, but that's, that's stupid. Everybody enjoys getting gold. Everybody enjoys the thrill of getting a rare item, um, deciding who gets it, because let's face it, if you get certain items, there are always people at the table. They want everything, even though they'll probably never use it. And I don't think Wizards thought this out. The people that are whining, I want it, I want it, I want it, it's probably an item they won't use. They just want it. And... You know what? Screw those players. I have little to no patience for that kind of bullshit. But, so there we are. We have XP is gone. You get to level up for time. And let's talk about that one more thing. The way it works, you'll get one advancement point per full hour played. Pay close attention to that. I said full hour played. They specify, let's say you get there late and you play an hour and 57 minutes. You earned one full hour, so you earn one advancement point. If the DMs are going to play by the rules, then they have to tell you, write one advancement point down. Everyone who is here for two hours, you get your two, you get one. And to be honest, we know how these people are going to be. They're going to write the two down and say they can do what they want, and it's going to fall on the DM, if it's a regular table, to make note of who has how many advancement points. Because this bullshit of it being on the honor system... That's exactly what it is. It's bullshit. There is no honor system with so many of these players. They will bullshit their way through. They will pretend that they got stuff they didn't get. And, you know, that's why I prefer playing a home group. I know exactly what everybody has. Everybody has. I know where they should be. Um, and they're all honest. Most players that come and sit down at your table, I'm going to be blunt. I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. They're not going to be honest about it. They'll be resentful that they didn't get to do that. But those are the rules. Now, let's say you play at a, at a store where your time is 7 to 9, but they make you pack up at, not, at, at 8.55. That's one advancement point. You don't get to give them the advancement points for two full hours because they did not play two full hours. And DMs... Play by the fucking rules, because they're the rules. You shouldn't be DMing if you're not playing by the rules. Honestly, you shouldn't be playing if you're not willing to play by the rules. So they've made these stupid rules. They've specified if you don't get two full hours in, you don't get two full points. Play by the rules as written. And 
if you're like me and you think these rules are stupid, enforce them as written. And as people complain, well, I was only there an hour and 55, and they complain the Wizards, or they do this or that, and Wizards said, you got one point coming, tough shit, that's the rules. Maybe they'll get tired of getting complaints, and they'll change the rules back, and we'll do XP. They'll have to have a video or something explaining how to bump up XP for the DMs that are math-challenged so that people advance at the rate they should instead of going, well, that doesn't give me enough for this many people. Read your DMG. It tells you how to do it. For God's sake, there are books written and put out by wizards that tell you how to adjust XP for parties or difficulty and things like that. If you're experienced, you don't need to look at the book. If you're new, look at the damn book and it'll tell you how to do it. We wouldn't have these problems if DMs did their part and learned how to adjust XP so a party levels where they should be if it's too large for... The encounters in a book or in an adventure. It's so simple. It's stupid. You know, you want to be a DM, do your job, learn how to be a DM. Don't do stupid stuff that makes us get these stupid rules changes that are just going to fuck the game up. And I'm telling you, if, if you do it the way they write and you're a group that moves in an average pace, your players are going to tear out. And no matter how much they whine, you have to tell them, all right, bring a first level character in. And you have to start up when we get to the next part of the adventure or the next book. Like this first, the thing coming up now, the water deep, it's going to be what, one through five? So if they level to six, they can't delay leveling. They cannot. They have to level up. Um, they can slow advancement by taking less points, but the minute they hit that enough points to be level six, they have to level up. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They can't bank points. And at that point, they tear it out. That guy can play when you get to the next book that'll start at level 6 through whatever, and they'll have to start another, another level 1 character. If they threaten to leave, tough shit. They shouldn't be playing if they can't play by the rules of the game. I really don't give a fuck if somebody flips out because they tiered out and they have to roll a new character. They need to play by the rules. You need to enforce the rules. They need to play by the rules. They're the rules. It's the game you're playing. You have to be happy with them. Or complain the wizards, and they'll change back to what it should be. But, you know, that's it for today. I mean, I'm totally disgusted with these changes. Like I said, we're going to have an economy of magic. We're going to have people that are constantly in treasure point debt, you know, uh, like, like people with credit cards that don't know how to budget. We're going to have no gold floating around. People pissed off because you're like, oh, there's gold. Oh, wait a minute. You don't get that gold. You just get that 50 or 75 when you level up to level two. So have fun with that. Um, it's... People are going to have new things to complain about because, you know, they complain. That hour and 57 minutes, they're going to complain. It's the rule. Get over it. I mean, that's my response to anybody when they complain about the rules. It's the rule. Get over it. If you can't deal with it, leave. It doesn't matter to me. Um, and I, the DMs need to start taking that attitude. It's the rules. Get over it. We're not rounding up because they are very specific. An hour and 57 minutes is one hour. Now in 59 minutes is the same thing. It's one hour. It's not two. So if you have a store where they close five minutes early, start five minutes early so your players get to two hours. The guy that shows up 15 minutes late, that's his problem. He gets one point. You know, just follow the rules no matter how stupid and horrible they are and move forward. If you're unhappy with them, hammer wizards and tell them how stupid these changes are. You know, don't quit the game because of it. Hammer wizards and constantly complain if you are unhappy with this bullshit. Now, if you're one of these people who were always whining because the guy at the table that actually needed got that plus one sword, now you'll be able to buy it, screw you. I don't like you as a player. I wouldn't play with you. So, I don't give a shit. But that's about it. Um, we're going to go back to some DCC content, talk about leveling your level zeros up to level one on our next video as well as uh, some corrections that I need to make, or one correction. But uh, we'll talk about DCC again on our next video, either late this week or next week on our normal time on Wednesday. But uh, that's it for today. Have a great weekend. Remember to rate, like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think of these stupid rules changes. And we'll see you next time. Bye.